Each month, Restaurant Hospitality will put the spotlight on rising stars, up-and-coming independent restaurant leaders that represent a next generation. We'll speak with these operators and chefs about the future of independent restaurants, menu and culinary innovations, operational adaptations, lessons learned, and more. And is sponsored by Smithfield Culinary. In this edition of Rising Stars, we speak with Mike Minnelli, who along with his wife Jen Rogers are now the owners of Passerelle in Greenville, South Carolina. We think their star is rising, and Mike is here to explain what he has planned for the future. I'm here with Mike Minnelli, who is now the owner of the restaurant Passerelle in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, uh, with his wife, Jen Rogers. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, we're talking with Mike today because he has a great story about the, how he came to own this restaurant, which, where he's been working for about uh, since 2017. And this is part of Table 301. It's a multi-concept group owned by Carl Sobosinski, who has a really interesting, it's not so much a retirement plan as it is his way of, of leaving a legacy for the industry. Um, so he is actually allowing the folks who work for him to take ownership of the brands, almost all of the brands that he operates. And I'm gonna let Mike explain a little bit about more about how this happened. So thanks for joining me, Mike. Um, tell me about your history with Table 301. Yeah, tell me about your history and, and what so, exactly happened. Uh, so Table 301, I was, I was lucky enough to come across back in 2016. I had just uh, left New Jersey. I was on a little hiatus in uh, Europe for about a month and a half. And I moved to Greenville uh, because my sister moved here and I had been here for her wedding a couple of years beforehand and fell in love with the city. Dined at Sobeys and I went back to New Jersey and talked about it for a couple of weeks to the chefs up there and said, this is an awesome restaurant. And then when I moved down here, I was lucky enough to uh, connect with Gina Bulware, who put me in touch with Steve Seitz and Carl and got invited into the 301 family. And the most attractive part about this was one, the size of the group, but two, uh, what, what Steve had broken down and Carl had, had, I'm sure has talked about many times before here was his his exit strategy, which has probably um, changed a little bit over the last couple of years, but uh, he had mentioned something about working as managers into ownership, and it just really, it made a light bulb go, a light bulb go off in my head, and, and it really made me feel like I made the right move to, to move to South Carolina from New Jersey. So I started working at Sobeys, and working pretty close with Carl, because that's his baby, and that's where he spent most of his time. He was either at the host stand or at Expo, and I was running around the room restaurant uh, the way I used to do in New Jersey and um, making some some marks and Sobeys I think a little bit and at about eight or nine months of being here I had mentioned to him that I was I moved down here with the purpose of getting into a restaurant so uh, we we talked about a couple of different ones and he had mentioned Passerelle and I had not dined there before but it's a cute little bistro on the river in uh, in Falls Park in the center of downtown and started working there and and putting my blood sweat and tears into it and looking at it more of a as an owner operator mentality than just a manager. So um, the way that I operated out of the gate was I was, I was intending to, to own this restaurant one day. So I'm going to start to do it now. And, and luckily I was, I was lucky enough to practice for the first year and a half. I was down there with, with Carl still being the owner. And then um, we, we commenced the, the start of the, the owner shift in November of 2019 um, or I'm sorry, 2018. So it was the end of 2018, right when my, just after my son was born, which was pretty wild. So um, I had became a 10% shareholder in the, in the restaurant group and kind of put all my chips that I had, had in the pot to, to get things started and was starting a family simultaneously and, and all that. And no stress there. <laughs> um, it just, it was very minimal, um, but it was, it was all good stress um if there is a kind and uh i mean the winters down there are very quiet so it was a very it's very weird to to get into a restaurant as a as a partner in any way shape or form in the slowest part of the year but at those points that's when you really need to tighten your belt and kind of it shows you what you're made of and what you can do in those slow months and we made it work for the few months and once spring opened up and the flowers bloomed and then the park started to get green again um the restaurant got busy as it typically does and we're very lucky for for what we have there with our outdoor dining. And, you know, we were going and, and running full steam ahead and having a great year. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, 
the pandemic hits yes. and it's just like, what's going to happen next? So um, Carl and his EC team um, made some difficult decisions as a, as a group and for the, the health and wellness of his, his restaurant group and for my health and wellness as well. And uh, I made some difficult decisions and able to weather the storm of, of the pandemic for you know, the whole year of 2020. And we shut down for the whole month of April, which was wild. And I know that, you know, where I came from in New Jersey, it's, it's still a mess up there. And I feel so sad for them up there and all my friends and, and family members that, that still are up there. But um, South Carolina, we, we, we powered through and we were super fortunate with our weather, uh, with our outdoor dining spaces. We didn't have to create a lot of these outdoor spaces because we're we're blessed to have them throughout the city and, and Passerelle, if, if anybody knows Passerelle that's been to Greenville, Passerelle is outdoor dining, it's alfresco and that's, that's what we do. So I was definitely in a better vantage point than, than a lot of other restaurants that had to build tents and, and make patios out of walkways and business coming in, which is fantastic. And everybody kind of made it work. And at the end of uh, 20, 2020, um, we, Carl and I kind of struck another deal on the side and, and ended up uh, transferring the ownership uh, as of January 1st. So it was, it was very, um, it's a once in a lifetime. I mean, I can't say that enough. I don't know why this happened to me. I'm very, very lucky. I mean, I've, I lived down in Las Vegas for many years and I lived down in New Jersey most of my life. And I made, I'm not going to say a lot of bad decisions, but I'm sure everybody has, but for some reason, all of them have led me to where I am now so that's that's the faith I have is that you know every every decision you make leads to something else so you just got to stay positive and optimistic and hope that you're doing things for the right right reasons so. now now your wife was also the executive chef there right so she joined in 2017 as well mm -hmm. you both came in yeah and neither of you had owned a restaurant she before. joined in she joined just me she owned a restaurant in Emma. she was uh she was in a restaurant with her mother um, in Florence, Alabama, and uh, she had a she had it for about two years. And she moved to Greenville in twenty. I'm gonna do math in my head now. Twenty seventeen, um, in like August, September ish, and we started dating pretty quickly. She was the chef at Sobeys for a little while, and I was in the move to to moving down to Passerelle at that point. And I tell you, we like locked eyes, and to me, I was like, that was it. I'm like, that's that's the chef, the wife the woman I've been looking for, because I always knew that if I was ever going to find love in this world, it would probably have to be with somebody that one loves the industry as much as I do, but was in the, in, in the industry with me. So um, when I saw her, I was like, but I mean, I knew exactly when I saw her that she was, she was the one and things moved quickly. Obviously you can kind of break the timeline down for yourselves. If, you know, we, we got married last year and we have a baby that's two and a half, so you can do the math on that. Um, <laughs> But I mean, again, we, we just rolled with it and, and we knew that we had each other and, and the support of each other. And she's, she's down there now looking out and it's, it's nice to have that, that backside of the restaurant. Like I know it's covered. I know it's good because I have somebody that cares about it as much as I do. So it's, it's really nice. It's very right, good. Right. Well, there must've been a point though. So when the pandemic started, you were at 10% ownership at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Did, was there a point where you thought, Yes, is this the right thing to do? Do I really want to go in all in, on in this, you know, given the pandemic and how long it went on? Well, I was, I was very, I was very fortunate because I know that Carl has has weathered hard times before, and I had a lot of faith in his his skill set. I mean, he's he's done very well, and he stands by his people. He supports his people. Um, so I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I left that up to him, and I knew that just kind of being with him and by his side, I knew everything was going to be okay. Um, so that was that kind of eased all that that was going on and made that time a little easier. I mean, there was, there were some suggestions and, and things like that, that, that he made that um, I definitely 100% agreed with. And there were hard decisions that, that he made for his restaurant group. And I was kind of just lucky enough to be a part of that and a part of those, those decisions. So. And, and you, the, you lucky. remain part of the group now, right? So you still have the buying power, the purchasing power that might be available as, as part of the whole group. We do not. So no. we, we did, I mean, it's going to be a weird transition here because of the way we kind of sped everything up towards the end. Um, we're still working with them in many facets with accounting, uh, with CPAs, with, with things like that. 
Um, so we're working on slowly just kind of peeling the onion back. I didn't want to, I didn't feel a need to like go all out and just say, hey, this is it, goodbye. Um, Cause I don't think that's, that's the way to do it. I think that there's, there's a way to do this naturally and organically and let it happen. Like as, as we get more comfortable with things, we'll, we'll probably try to take on more like my wife and, and myself. Um, but for now, I mean, it's, it's nice to have the backbone in it. I mean, honestly, the, the experience that Table 301 has in the city and in the restaurant business, uh, you know, you're talking about 20 plus years experience, almost 30 for, from just Carl. And then, you know, there's the team behind him with everybody that, that supports him. So it's, 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 it's really special what he has down here, what he has built down here. And the way that he's perpetuating as well now with, with, still moving forward. I think in the beginning for him, it was an exit strategy to get out of the restaurant business. And now he said he gets kind of a high off of opening restaurants and seeing people grow into them and things like that. So I, I think it's a pretty amazing concept that's that's evolved in the last couple of years here with, you know, with Poppies and Gianna leaving over the last couple of years and now myself breaking away, but not really breaking away, just kind of like starting to drift off, if you will. Uh, um, and then building more in his company and then he's going to maybe move some more restaurants out the, out the backside to other people who are eager and want to want to grow in this business. It's, it creates an environment where people want to do better, want to drive and want to want to get better. And it, it shows them that there is like a way to get there. So, right. So uh, for those watching, I'm going to explain this is uh, Pastorella is actually mm -hmm. the third concept that Carl has, has, uh, you know, spun off, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, the, you mentioned Poppy's Tacos, which is was was actually acquired by somebody who started as a dishwasher with the company and now is expanding that brand. And then mm -hmm. Gianna was is an Italian concept that one was so, was sold off to um, a manager mm -hmm. last year, and so this is the third one. So I, I mm -hmm. want to ask you, Mike, as much as you can explain how exactly you structured the acquisition, in, as, without getting too personal. But I would love to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, are you able to now mm -hmm. own this restaurant debt free, which is a huge burden you know a lot of folks take on a lot of debt to, to buy their mm -hmm. first place so can what can you tell us about the way you've done it um it was a lot of sweat equity i mean on the on the front end i had to come up with i mean a fairly sizable amount for myself um of, of just savings and things like that to kind of get my skin in the game so to speak um but we set it up as tiers because before i had moved down there passerell was not the most profitable um so there was a fair amount of debt tied into Passerelle with intercompany stuff. And the goal was to pay down this debt over the years. And as we paid down more debt, it would acquire more interest for me in the business with a final amount on the back end um, that I would have to either finance myself or owner finance. Um, and that's what, we're, that's what we're doing right now. Um, so there is some debt that I have on there, but it's nothing as compared to what I would have if I was in this situation up in New Jersey where, you know, you need a half a million dollars to get a liquor license and you right. know, investors to build and things like that, or, or, or to take on a property. I mean, you know, you're talking seven figures to, to open up a restaurant with a liquor license uh, to sell liquor, beer, wine, and food. It's, it's costly. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not starting off in the negative and it's not going to take me 10 years to get to where I can make some money in this place. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Pretty remarkable. <laughs> Well, and so you mentioned, you know, the, it, it's a French bistro. You've got a lot of outdoor seating. You're well positioned in that mm -hmm. sense. But tell us more about the restaurant. How many seats do you have? Tell us about the menu and what you're thinking about going forward. So we're a traditional French bistro, but we're not super, um, I don't know, the word, I don't want to say like fancy because we are outside. We consider ourselves a little more relaxed. Uh, but we have about 60 seats outside and about 35 to 40 seats inside. So we're two thirds on our patio with a covered awning. Um, we're nestled in the middle of this corner that overlooks the waterfall downtown. Oh. So you can kind of lose track of time and, and, and sit out there, just have a glass of wine and some apps. And I mean, we do great mussels. We do great, um, you know, croissants and things like that. Uh, but we keep it approachable and we want, you know, the food to speak for itself. We're not trying to get overly fancy with it. Um, we want to keep it affordable and approachable with value. Um, down the road, my, my wife is, uh, was a baker or is a baker and does some amazing pastries and cakes, um, wedding cakes, what have you. So I think for the future, that's something we want to really explore is that side, the pastry side of it. Um, we're open for lunch and dinner right now, but with hotels opening up over the bridge and, 
and the whole Camperdown project that they're doing right in the middle of the city here. Um, we're hoping that maybe there's a breakfast business in there in the future. So I'm not saying when in 2021 or 22, but that's something we might try to try to put ourselves on the map for is, is a breakfast service um, that's simple, but again, um, good food, good coffee, and, and just somebody can pop in and, and get a nice breakfast quick, fast, and then go to work because that walk over the bridge, I mean, it's, Carl says it's the best walk to, to work in, in the city. You know, I park over the bridge every day and I walk to the, over a waterfall to go to work every day. It's, it's something that's- That sounds lovely. Like nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, and mm -hmm. are you open for dine-in in South Carolina now? We are. We are yeah. at, um, we're at full capacity with social distancing, um, which still limits us. I mean, since we were in that bistro dynamic where we had very small tables, kind of tight knit and that you would feel in like a French bistro, we had to push stuff together. So we went from having 18 tables inside to having six. Um, so it limits our availability inside. But again, with our outdoor dining, with heaters and with creating warm environments as much as possible, it's been very good. We've been very, very fortunate. So, so what are your goals going forward then? So you and your wife sit down, now you own the restaurant. What, where you, would you like to be 10 years from now? I mean, I, I would like to, I'd like to own more than one restaurant. I think the goal for me is eventually to get to two or three. Um, and I'm not against having a partner in the future either. I think that that is something I would, I would definitely look at. Um, I think having a bakery or small little, very small brick and mortar that we can focus our pastries out of would be nice too. So, I mean, getting my feet grounded in the restaurant, kind of freestanding by myself and I guess riding the wave and then see which direction it goes, that's going to kind of define the next, you know, 10 years. But for long-term goals, I think getting into, you know, a couple more restaurants down the road. Okay. Fantastic. Mike, thanks for taking the time and good luck. No, I appreciate it. I hope you'll stay in touch and let us know how you grow. And uh, we'll talk in Thank 10 you. years and see whether or not you've reached your goal. <laughs> I love <laughs> Maybe it. Maybe before you so then. Much done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Make sure to check out our next Rising Star, debuting on the third Wednesday of every month. And if you know someone who is a Rising Star, let us know at lisa.jennings, J E N N I N G S, at informa.com.